it's great to be back with you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you all today. God's got some great stuff planned for us this year. I'm believing. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this tremendous pleasure of being with with each other today, whether we're in our kitchens, whatever we're doing today, Lord Jesus, thank you for our life. Thank you for our health. Thank you for the safe crossover into a new year. I pray, Lord Jesus, that this will be a year of learning, a year of understanding, a year of visions coming to fruition, Lord Jesus. Let the fire of God come and just invade our lives this year. Just take us to places that we could not have imagined, oh God. Whether it be joy, whether it be sorrow, Lord God, we're, we're asking, Lord Jesus, that you teach us this year. Teach us about ourselves. Teach us about each other. Teach us how to love each other. Teach us how to love ourselves. Teach us how to love you more. And as I speak, Lord, the word that you've given me, Lord God, I pray that you permeate every sentence, every syllable, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to me and speak through me. Amen. Okay, guys. This is going to be a kind of a sermon to chew on. I've been off for three weeks, but I'm back today! Oh my god. I can't. I'm so excited to be back with you. Um, the Lord has been teaching me a lot, and all he's been saying to me is, believe me. Everything that I told you, just believe me. Believe me. Believe that it's going to be yours. Believe that it's going to come to pass. Believe. 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 And so I'm calling this sermon, Believe Me. I believe that God is very strategic in this moment. I believe that he's gathering his people together in ways that we could not imagine. I believe that he's saying, believe me, trust me, have faith in me. Like everything that I told you in the dark, in your dark season, in your down season, will be coming to pass this year. And he's like, everything that I told you, specifically for me, he's saying, I've, I've given you plays that you've stored away in private videos on YouTube. I've given you novels. I've given you songs. I've given you all that, and you know, all of that is coming together this year. And I said, because I'm going to be 40 in September, you guys. I don't look it, but I'm going to be 40 in September. And he said, your 40th year is going to be your best year. Um, he, he said, this year... We say that about every year, but there's something that's going to take place this year that is going to sh take us to our very core in the best way. He's taking out everything that we, he took out everything that we thought we needed last year. And then this year he's going to fill us up with him. He just wants us to have a close relationship with him. And he's saying to you and to me, I'm preaching to myself here too as well. He's saying everything that I've told you, every dream that I've given you, 
every time that you've been up at night unable to sleep because not because you're worried, not because you're stressed, but because I've been filling your head with visions and with dreams and with things I creative things I want to put inside side of you and strategic partnerships that I want you to have. Know that it's all going to come to pass. Know that all the pain, everything is worth it because it's going to come to pass. And no devil, nothing in hell, heaven or earth is going to stop the plan of God for your life. Nothing could ever stop the plan of God for your life. Everything that the devil has thrown at you, will throw at you, everything that is coming this year is, is, has been first, um, uh, through the hand of God. It's like a sieve. Nothing that has happened to you and will happen to you this year, last year, or any other year um, is without God's notice. Every good thing, every challenging thing, every everything that will come against you this year everything that came against you last year and the years previous. Nothing was outside the knowledge of God. And no, he didn't cause everything, but he will use everything. It's like a shipwreck supper. Um, when I was living at the Gage, which is a transitional living center for people with disabilities, um, one of the attendants, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money. I still don't. But one of the attendants, when I was low on groceries, I was like, "What am I gonna do?" She's like, "Oh, we're going to make a shipwreck supper." So she took all the leftovers in my fridge and made something up. Um, I forget now the leftovers I had. But she took all the leftovers I had and made something up. And that's what the Lord is going to do. Going to do. Every issue you've had, there's been something left over, either good, bad, or ugly. There's been something left over from it. Um, uh, for you, whether it be whatever it will be. And God said, this year, I will use everything left over. Nothing that you have been through, will go through, are going through, will be left over after this year. He's going to use everything for his good. Like he said in his word that he, you, Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So everything that people have tried to mean for evil for you is going to be for good. He's saying, believe me. He's saying, believe me that everything I have said to you in the dark will come to the light and everything that you, that I have put forth for you will be used. Every lesson, every mistake, every bad relationship, every bad friendship, every job loss, everything will be used for good. It, he'll leave nothing unused this year. Everything that you've gone through, every no, every email that you've sent that has gone unanswered, every song that you've written that has gone unheard, every idea that you have put 
down in your little book um, what we use. And he said, I will use everything for my good. And uh, he's saying, believe me. He's just saying, believe me. Believe that everything I have said will come to pass. Believe that everything I have said will be brought forth. Everything in you, every idea, every real estate thing, every teaching thing, everything that you have been preparing for will come to pass. He's saying, believe me. He's like, I'm going to send some divine partnerships. He's saying, he's saying, he's sending some divine friends, some divine relationships, even for you all single people like me. He said, I am sending that, div not, not just the great sex partner, not just the great uh, provider or whatever. He's like, your intimate relationship will be a divine partnership will be a divinely orchestrated partnership. You just have to put your ears to the ground and hone your relationship with me. He's like, the key to getting all of this, the key to um, getting all this I have for you is just for you to listen. For you to listen to what I'm saying to you. For you to believe my word. And he's like saying, even if you don't believe, even if you don't have faith, you, he's like, you can be honest with me. Because we don't talk about this, but I found in my life that faith is a journey. And it's a different journey for everyone. So pastors are like, you gotta have faith. If you have faith as big as the mustard seed, you can move mountains. But what they don't say, that mountain moving faith, it's a process to get to. Get to. And we're all at different stages in the process. And he's like, be honest about your process of faith. If you're not there, say, I'm not there yet, Lord. Help me get there. And he will help you get to the place in your faith um, that you are called to be at. You don't have to be at super faith. We're all at different levels of faith. And He's saying it's okay. What? Just, just be honest with me, and I will take it the rest of the way. I will take you to where you need to go. And he's saying, don't worry. Be honest with me, and understand that you are not alone, and you are not stupid, and. You, you were not like a dumb Christian and all those other Christians are, be are better than you. You're just at a different place in your faith. And that's okay. He's saying, hone my relationship with you. Spend time with me. Get to know me. And even that, that thing too is individual. However you get to know the Lord is is individual for you. Your life, your walk, the purpose that he's that he's given you. It's all unique to you. And he's saying to home that he's saying, I wanna teach you about yourself and he says, I want to teach you about me. And I want to teach you 
how to better understand other people. But for all of that, you need to spend time with me. And your time with me is not going to look like other people's time with me. It's going to be very individual. He's like, I want to open my heart to you. We often, we often talk about uh, God um, open our hearts to to Him, but He wants to open open His heart to us as well. He wants to tell us His secrets. He wants to reveal all of this stuff to us. But for that, he needs a close relationship with you. He needs to know that he can trust you with his secrets. And he's saying, whatever I've said to you, believe me. He's saying, believe me. You don't, you don't even have to know anything about what I've said to you. He's saying, just believe me. Just believe me. Just take my hand. Even if you don't believe me fully yet, take my hand and understand that, that all you need to do is take one step. You don't even have to fully get where, where I'm coming from, but just understand that I've got you and whatever you go through this year, remember that I've got you and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he, he wants me to say that he loves you so much. He loves you so much and he wants you to know how special you are to him, how needed you are for the kingdom, how how seen you are, how loved you are, and how needed you are. A lot of people think that God doesn't need them. But I'm here to say that he does need you. He does need you. You are important to him. And not in a cocky way that, oh, he needs you. He doesn't need your bad attitude. He doesn't need your cockiness. What he needs is your humility. And what he's longing for is just your brokenness. Um, I, a few, a few um, days ago, I posted an uh, interview with, with my friend Melissa that I did. And, and it, it was a wonderful interview. You could watch it. It's posted um, uh, somewhere. It's posted on YouTube and it's posted on Facebook. If you go down, you'll, you'll see the link to the Spotify interview. And in that interview, I said, um, sometimes he has to break you to build you. For years you've wondered, why hasn't this worked out? What's going on with me? Why isn't this happening? Why is this falling apart? You try this one thing, it falls apart. You try this other thing, it falls apart. You try this other thing. It falls apart, and the more the more things fall apart, is the more it tends to break your confidence. Like you start out all the way confident, you're like, I can do this or whatever. But first rejection, you're like, maybe next time. Second rejection, you're like, maybe next time. By the sixteenth rejection, you're like, oh my god, this is never gonna work out. By the, by the 20th rejection, you're like, oh my God, I should just give up now. He's saying, 
I had to break you to build you and bless you. He's like, God's like, I had to break you. I had to take you through that divorce. I had to take you through that broken friendship. I had to take you through the death of that family member to build you up. And you, something has to be broken to be built. Have you ever seen those shows where they demolish buildings and then they build it up um, to be something new? And that's what he's, what he's doing. He had to break you all those years to build you. And I declare that all the broken pieces will be used to build you. And I declare that this year you will see the fruit of your labor. You will see everything come to pass that you that you have set forth to do. And I declare that that breaking is building you. Every broken thing in your life is going to be used as a building piece to build you. Every broken thing in your life is going to be used as a building piece to build you. Lord Jesus, thank you for breaking us because we know that it's going to build us. And everything that you, every idea, every song, every book, everything, every, every idea for your kids, everything that you see. The reason why you're so restless and you feel like you don't fit at the job and you're just getting ideas from nowhere and you're like, oh, that could be a solution for that. Oh, oh, that could be a solution for that. Oh, that could be a solution for that. Is because he's placed divine insight in you. And this year, that divine insight is going to come to fruition. He had to hide that divine insight because he had to water it and and make sure it was planted deep. But that this year, that divine insight will be used. This year, you'll be called to tables that you didn't have to send an email for. This year, people will find you on the internet and say, oh, I was just, um, I was just on the internet and I found you. Um, I know that you're doing this. Can you help me with this? And that this will that they will be people that you wouldn't have thought of how you will find you. They will be people from the east and from the west. They'll be like, Hey, you live in the US, but I'm from South Africa, but I'd like to partner with you in this. So start putting forth. I don't care whether it's a YouTube channel or whether it's an Instagram or whatever. And there are some, I don't, I don't know what I'm getting, but there are a couple people out there that are like, I don't like social media. It's a, it's a cesspool. I don't know how to use it. The Lord is saying, get your thing together. Get on social media. Start releasing those ideas. They've been stored up for too long. Start releasing those ideas. Where, what, whether they'll, they're for parenting whether they're for real estate, whether they're for whatever, start releasing those ideas. Start posting. 
Start sharing what God has given you. Start giving us, start sharing the divine understanding that God has given you. Because he's given you that from what area you worked in. And then when you start sharing, people will flock to you. And it won't be easy, but people will flock to you. And those people who have been on social media for years, he said, get ready. Get ready. The, 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 the strategic partnerships are coming. People will see you on social media that they that you you didn't even think know your name. Like people will be calling you. He's like, get ready because everything I've stored up in you will come to pass. Everything I've set forth in you will come to pass. Everything that I've set forth for you this year will come to pass and 2024 will be a year of divine revelation, a year of divine provision, a year of divine understanding. A year of divine awakening. This generation is getting ready to rise and do things that we've never seen. This generation is getting ready to wake up. Wake wake up the sleeping giants. I'm here today to wake up the sleeping giants. The people that have been writing letters in their spare time that have been that have been stowing away ideas for their industry that have been getting divine visions that have been feeling restless that have been saying there's more you've been unable to sleep because you've been feeling restless and you're like what is this he's like this is divine restlessness the reason why you feel that you're not supposed to be there is be, is because you're not. The, the reason you feel that you're too good for that job is because you are. Not in a um, vain way, but in a humility way. He's like, I've given you divine understanding that is past anyone in your family, anyone that you've ever seen, anyone in the media that you've ever seen up giving you, and you see a, some people see a problem and say, oh, I would do this this way. I would do things that way. And you record how you would do things, how you would structure things, how you would do things differently. He's saying that understanding will benefit you this year. All the ideas that you've secretly stowed away, all the ideas you've written down and thought, oh my gosh, this is not going to come to pass. He's like, this year is the year that it will come to pass. This year is the year that you will see what you've been saying that you've been print what you've been praying about for the last, for the past ten years. Those years were just for preparation. And you were wondering why didn't it work out? Why didn't it, it work out? Because you weren't ready to work for it to work out at that time. If it had worked out at that time it would have killed you. He's saying, but now you're ready. Now you're ready to experience everything that I've planned for you. Now you're ready to experience all the joy, all, all the all the benefits of what I have planned for you. And he's saying, now you're ready. Now you're ready. Now I can give you what I planned for you. You 
you weren't you weren't mature before to handle that, but now you are. And now I can now I can give you wealth you didn't dig, plants you didn't plant, because now I can trust you. The Lord is looking for saints that he can trust. So he's saying, now that you've been through all the hell that you've been through, I know that I can trust you. And I will rain down things that you're like, where did this come from? How did I get here? Divine timing and divine alignment. Like there was a song a few years ago that said, when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. And that's what's going to happen to your life this year, my life this year. Thank you, Lord, for your divine revelation and understanding, God. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for riding with us through the storm. He's saying, it, it won't be easy, but I'll be with you in everything. And I'm sending the divine partnerships. I'm sending what you need. He's saying, he's saying in some cases, you already have what you need. That divorce that you went through two years ago gave you what you need for what's going to happen in your life this year. That loss of a loved one three years ago gave you what you need what I'm going to give you this year. And he said, I will use everything. Nothing will come to waste. Nothing that you've been through will go to waste this year. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys, I'll see, okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Bye.